All right, we're now broadcasting. Hi, everybody. Are you in? Are you settled? Have you finished your day of work or your supper or wherever you are in Canada or the rest of the world? I'm Robin Pond. So great to see you again. I am on board of For Homeopathy Canada. And as you know by now, because you've been watching all of our webinars, we are here for you. We are here to educate you, to teach you all about homeopathy, and to help you learn how to use homeopathy at home. Um, we are, have lots of things in the pipeline coming up. I can't share them all with you, but stay tuned. Come join us on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us and we'll let you know what we are going to be doing in the exciting new decade that has not officially started, because I think it's 2021, but for our purposes, we'll say it has started and we have lots of new things coming. I'm going to ask our speaker here is Christy. Hi, Christy. Hello. Thank you. There you go. She just she changed it on cue. She's terrific. <laughs> Christy is gracing us with her presence today. She's in the West Coast in Vancouver, is that right? Yes, yeah, in Vancouver, downtown. Which has more snow than does Toronto and Montreal, I think, right now, which is ironic. Let me tell you a little bit about Christy because she's going to be talking tonight about cell salts. And she was introduced to homeopathy in her late teens when it cured her lifelong eczema after just a few doses. Um, and it has stayed away for 17 years. Well, that's a pretty good cure, I would say. This led her to abandon her studies at the University of British Columbia, and she moved the next year to London, England. What an adventure, right? To start a university degree in homeopathy. This is at the University of Westminster, which no longer offers the program, in case you want to know. But she was able to be one of the final graduates. She did graduate in 2008 with an honors degree in health sciences and homeopathy, and then moved back to Vancouver in 2010 to start Zettel, that's her last name, homeopathy at the age of 26. She has been in private practice ever since and has a special interest in helping clients safely reduce non-essential medication by strengthening the body's defense mechanism and improving overall levels of health with individually selected homeopathic remedies. Well, that sounds absolutely perfect. Yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Where do I sign on? <laughs> Christy volunteers with British Columbia Association of Homeopaths, where she's on the board as secretary. And in 2016, I don't know if any of you who've been looking for products online, natural products, I know I stumbled upon this not knowing that this was Christy's company. It's Jackson's Naturals, and she helps people maintain their health and hopefully prevent the onset and severity of many of the chronic conditions she sees in her practice. In the last 10 years, Christy has seen countless clients reduce and prevent the need for stronger medications by trying homeopathy first. There is usually a window of time where you can try something naturally safe with homeopathy, and very often it's all that's needed to get the body back on track. And I would say that there's a very long window, so don't think that if you've waited too long, you can't try homeopathy, right? Absolutely. Uh, pertinent for today's talk, Jackson's Naturals has an in-house brand of vegan and lactose-free cell salt, and they are the Canadian importers for Helios Homeopathy, I get uh, most of my medicines from there, and Miranda Castro's healing products. And on a personal note, she is a mother to a very busy toddler named Jackson, who had a little fever yesterday due to teething. How's he doing today? He's pretty good. He's on the mend now, so uh, Ferrum Floss actually helped quite a bit, so there you go. And she uh, has a rescue fur son or dog named Frank, and both have been helped by cell salts. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I went to school, we were given a class on cell salts on the very second weekend, I believe, and nobody knew what they were and how they fit into homeopathy. So we are very blessed to have you tonight, Christy. I'm going to give the controls over to you. I'm going to disappear. Everybody, I present to you Christy Zettel. Okay, thanks very much, Robin. I'm really pleased to be here today. Um, so today our topic is homeopathic cell salts for cold and flu and I tried to make it a quick and easy guide um, So there's a quick reference and I'll put the email at the end of the presentation But if you'd like a copy of these slides, you can email me and I'd be happy to send you a PDF of that Christy, okay, I'm just so going to interrupt for one second. I forgot to tell people as I always forget Please, we're going to have a Q&A at the end Please put them into the Q&A uh, on your page. You can see where to type it in, and we will ask the questions later. Okay, back to you. Please ask questions. Yes, please ask questions. I know that they'll come up, and there's no question too small or too big. Okay, so we're going to talk about homeopathic cell salts for colds and flu. Um, and again, I tried to make it as quick and easy as we can uh, to do that. So uh, what we're going to be talking about, one, 
what are Schussler cell salts? How do they relate to homeopathy? Um, why, why would you use them? Um, what are some of the benefits? And then we get into the top cell salts uh, to have at home for cold and flu. Um, and then I discovered in Herring's 12 tissue remedies, a really handy snot chart. Now it wasn't quite called that in the book, but um, you get the hint. So we'll save that for the end. Okay, so here we go. So what are cell salts? So um, they're micro doses, so they're small doses, usually in a 6x potency, homeopathic potency, of the most common inorganic salts found in the body. Um, and each cell salt helps regulate and balance important functions in the body. So that's the basic idea of what cell salts are. We can get into more detail now. Um, and just so you know, cell salts is the same as tissue salts, the same as Schussler salts, the same as mineral salts. Um, they all, they're all the same thing, they just have different names. I think in homeopathy, we like to have different names for lots of different things. <laughs> we just like to do that. Okay, um, so how does cell salts relate to homeopathy? Well, you could view cell salts as an offshoot of homeopathic medicine. Um, Miranda Castro coined it the supplements of our homeopathy, and I think that uh, puts it quite well into perspective in terms of how they're used. So cell salts tend to be used more on a physical level um, and for more physiological complaints, whereas homeopathic remedies, um, they're applied on an individual basis. Um, so Schussler, Dr. Schussler, he was a German homeopathic physician who developed this biochemical theory. Now I've read different books and some say he wasn't a homeopath, um, but he definitely was a homeopath in the beginning. I think at the end, he renounced homeopathic medicine and just focused on his biochemical theory. Um, but yes, he was a homeopathic physician. So, and cell salts are also related to homeopathy because they're prepared homeopathically. So um, we have what's called monographs for every homeopathic remedy that's made. There's a monograph, which is a standard of how it's produced. Um, so it tells you what you have to break it down with, what you mix it with, and then how you dilute and succuss it. So all the cell salts follow a monograph, um, and they're usually in the 6x potency. Now I know um, you can sometimes get a 12x or sometimes rec recommended, um, but 6x or 6d, which is the same thing. Again, another 6d and x means the same thing um, in terms of the dilution. Um, yeah, so that's that. So here's a nice quote from Dr. Schussler in Herring's book, restoration of the cell and thereby of the body will result from restoration of the deficit of the inorganic salts. So that puts very succinctly what his um, hypothesis was for using cell salts. Um, and we're gonna go over the main principles um, that he goes over. So the human body contains 12 essential mineral salts. A correct balance of them is necessary for normal cell function and for maintaining health in the body. If the balance of the mineral salts is disturbed, disturbed, i.e. if there's too much of the salt in the cell and around the cell or too little of the, of the cell salt, um, abnormal functioning and possible disease follows. So um, the balance of salts in our body, whether they're within the cell, some salts stay in the cell, some salts are in the, in the um, liquid surrounding the cell. If, if that balance of salts is off, his hypothesis is that then we get disease and symptoms come um, as a result. And so to fix this, he says, a normal balance can be restored by administering the defi deficient mineral salts in a readily assimilated form. And in his view, the 6x potency um, in, in most of the salts cases was the dilution of it within the cell. So it's going to be rapidly um, absorbed by the body in that, in that potency. Um, so he found the most efficient way to do this was through a homeopathic prepared microdose, which enters our cells rapidly via the bloodstream. Um, so again, they dissolve under the tongue and then enter straight into the body. Okay. So why, why try them? Well, one is it's a great way to get started using homeopathy. Um, if you have no experience and you don't, you want to start using it in the home, but you don't know where to start because literally there's thousands of remedies. Where do you start? I like the idea of the 12 cell salts because it gives you a very clear um, framework to work within. Um, the potencies are very low, so they're safe. Um, and uh, it, it just, it gives you a framework, just like having a remedy kit 
uh, you know, that has maybe 18 to 36 really common homeopathic remedies is a great way to start using homeopathy. Again, using the cell salt is, a, is another way to kind of enter homeopathy using it at home. Um, it's safe for all stages and ages in life. Um, I've used it with my dog. He's sleeping on the couch. He might pop his head up <laughs> here and there. He came to me with work today. Um, I used it with him. I used it during pregnancy. I actually uh, used uh, my teeth. What's common, I guess, in pregnancy is your teeth become loose, your gums go all crazy. They don't tell you that before you get pregnant. Um, but I was going to need to get my wisdom teeth pulled because they were moving so much. So I started taking Calc 4. And then when I met, you know, two weeks later with the dentist, you know, we were going to book the appointment. She said, oh, okay, things are okay. It's not looking as inflamed. So I was able to put off needing a surgery during my pregnancy, um, which I was very happy about. Um, and again, they're safe for babies. Um, they're safe for elderly people um, because they're such a low potency. So they're really, uh, yeah, they're just, they're just safe. <laughs> That's all I can say about it. They don't, and another great thing about it, if you're seeing a homeopath and always talk to your homeopath before you um, take anything else, any other homeopathic remedies, but they generally don't inf interfere with constitutionally prescribed homeopathic remedies. So again, check with your homeopath, make sure it's okay, but they're safe to take if you're on, under constitutional treatment because they're acting on different levels. Um, that's kind of the thought. So I've definitely done that in my practice a lot. Um, you know, someone might have a constitutional remedy, but maybe there's something um, physical and bothersome um, that they want a daily support for, and this is a really good option. This is kind of how I got into using and learning about cell salts. Because um, interestingly, cell salts, it's not really a big thing in England where I did my, my studies. Uh, after kind of doing some research for this webinar, I realized that, you know, it kind of, it developed in Germany and then Herring took Schussler's teachings to the U.S. where it proliferated and Bulwark and Dewey, they published a lot of stuff around that, but it, I didn't see it then go to England or see the same kind of um, text being, like the main text, they come from the States. Um, and Germany, uh, the original text. So yeah, it's just interesting how we, but although English homeopaths can use really low potencies of other remedies, but anyways, neither here nor there. Um, yeah, they generally don't interfere with constitutionally prescribed homeopathic remedies. And I haven't seen that in my practice, um, them interfering. And another really uh, great reason to use them and um, probably uh, topical is they don't interfere with other medications. So. If someone's on a bunch of medications, if there's polypharmacy involved, um, it can be a good option to try um, if something else comes up. I mean, it might be more palliative than curative, but um, that's not a bad thing given the situations. Um, so yeah, if we can ease some suffering, however we do it, nice and gently without hurting anyone, um, I think that's ideal. Okay. So we're getting right into the top cell salts for colds and flus. Um, and it's, it's pretty quick and easy, I have to say. So hopefully I have enough material to last us <laughs> all the way to 45, but let's keep going. Okay, so for the beginnings of a cold, you want to think about ferrum phosphoricum or ferrum phosphate as it's known, uh, also known. Um, again, there's this homeopathy, we use different names and they mean the same thing. Some remedies have three different names depending on what date the book was published. <laughs> so it's kind of fun when you're uh, learning, you get to learn all these different quirks about homeopathy. So anyways, ferrum phosphate is excellent for the first stage of inflammation um, when there's fever, especially if there isn't very many other symptoms that go on. Um, so another great reason why cell salts are good to use uh, with kids is sometimes you can't get a lot of information from them, especially if they're pre-verbal, um, or and you can't observe anything else. So ferrum phos is a great one to consider. I know, um, and he might, well, Murray, Murray Feldman told me that, you know, a good protocol for fever in children's when it's nondescript, but high fever is... Um, four doses, four to six hours apart. Uh, and he said in his experience that tends to nip it in the bud. So this is, you could think of this as a nip it in the bud kind of remedy, just like aconite is with colds. Um, can you even think, I mean, there's some, 
there's some crossover with aconite and aconite as a homeopathic remedy um, and ferrum floss. Although ferrum floss, you know, you want to think of that. So the very beginning of a cold, um, there's a fever and not much else. That's when you really want to give it. So the first stage of inflammation, the cold, um, it's a really great one uh, to consider. Um, we have some diagrams with each of the um, cell salts that we're going to be talking about, and it also covers some of the other ways that they can be used. So ferrum phosphate is excellent remedy for simple anemia. Um, simple meaning there's no other um, underlying cause that can be dis distinguished. Um, uh, maybe there's, you know, there's nothing else really going on that's contributing to it. Maybe it's just started. Ferrum phos is a great one to consider uh, to try for that, to help support that. Um, and also because ferrum phosphate, its role is to help the body carry oxygen in the body more efficiently. Um, so any kind of inflammation, even if it's from a physical trauma, like a sprain, um, it's also very, very useful. So you can see again, it it could probably even be taken with Arnica um, if you have an accident like that. So again, it's just going to help. And, and, and what I'm talking about, I mean, Arnica helps the blood transport things more efficiently as well. That's why bruises um, reduce so much quicker when you're taking Arnica or applying it topically, to kind of help it break down quicker. So um, I think in Ferrum Foss, inflammation, first stage, try it. We'll go over... Um, how often to take it and things like that later on. Um, but this is just to give you an eye. Another remedy for the beginnings of the cold, maybe there isn't so much fever, but I've seen this so much. There's just so much sneezing, They're like, ah, ah, just sneezing, 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 and lots and lots of copious clear discharge. Um, nat Natrium muraticum sodium chloride are common salt, are lowly common salt, but are very giant, big, wonderful homeopathic remedy. Um, that's the one to, to consider for that. And, and again, it could be a nip it in the bud remedy in, in that aspect if you catch it quick enough. Um, and so that's just one of the, one of the ways you could use nap mirror. Um, but definitely for colds where there's a lot of sneezing, even um, what's interesting, dichotomy, but a lot of dryness of the mucous membranes, but then copious, you know, it's feeling of dryness, but copious discharge um, would be another... Uh, indication. And again, it, Nat Mira, it's really important. So you think about salt, it's about water balance and it's about the water balance within the cell. So you have these themes of dryness and then saturation or um, bloating or too much water in the cell. So that's why you kind of see both in that diagram. There's the dryness aspect, but then there's also the bloating and the slow digestion um, and things like that. Okay, so that's the beginnings. That's really simple. There's ferrum phosphate, simple fever. Uh, if you have a cold with a whole ton of sneezing, nat mirror. And that's, then that's backed up in our repertories as well. It's a very strong symptom of nat mirror, even beyond its use in cell salts. Um, okay. So the second stage of inflammation. So the second stage of inflammation, Cali muriaticum or potassium chloride. Um, that's that's the go-to. Um, so it supports the lymphatic system. It's very, it's a key mineral in lymphatic, um, in the lymphatic system and how it works and um, keeping it working well. So it improves the circulation of lymph, which brings out um, toxins and unwanted materials. Um, and then Calimer also helps the body through that flush, you know, any unwanted materials from dealing with the virus. So um, it just kind of helps your body detox better. And it can also be considered, you know, if you have a slug sluggish lymphatic system, that can be considered as a good support. Um, and it also has a very, very strong affinity to the middle ear inflammation and pain. So otitis media, um, it's a really, really important remedy to consider uh, for that as well, whether it's in a cell salt potency of 6x or whether you go homeopathically to the 30C. Um, you'd want to compare that with pulsatilla. Uh, oh, there's a whole host that you can compare it with. But um, yeah, that's what I would say about that. I don't want to give you too much information about the cell salts other than how they relate to cold and flu. Um, but of course, if you have questions, I hope that you will ask them at the end.
Okay, so this is a great quote um, from Schussler as written by Herring. So he says, as in, in all inflammatory cases, no matter which organ is the seat of it, ferrum floss should be given in the first stage and calimere in the second. Medication will be right even if the diagnosis is wrong. So what he's basically saying is give ferrum floss first, then follow it with calimere. Um, he didn't seem to think it mattered where it came from or um, the conditions around the inflammation. Um, so it's food for thought. Okay, and so let's say you're at the end of the cold or flu or acute illness and you're just feeling really depleted like you're weak you're tired you don't really have those height of symptoms anymore but you're just kind of burnt out or tired uh, calcium phosphate calcarea phosphorica would be a great remedy to consider for that um, it's very good for uh, states of depletion uh, is a great way to put it. Uh, it's also, I mean calcium phosphate is so important in the body in so many different levels you know the bones um, to, to give an example, but it's also inner albumin. So it's really important digestion, um, has a affinity to an anemia, the gastrointestinal tract. So it's a really kind of all encompassing mineral that's found in a lot of different parts of the body, which is probably one of the reasons why it's helpful to take, um, when you're feeling weak, cause that's kind of an all round feeling. Um, so it can help on many different levels. So that would be a really good one to consider uh, taking at the end. And of course, you need to rest. <laughs> we all like to push through colds and um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I always like to encourage people rest as much as you can. I mean, I know we have a busy life and world and lots of stuff to do, but um, if we don't rest now, when will we? Okay, so <laughs> I'm not gonna lecture on that. Um, and then the main remedy for flus, especially if they're gastrointestinal, so a GI flu, if there's a gastrointestinal nature to the flu, um, sodium sulfate, also known as natrium sulfuricum, is a really good remedy to take. Mm. It's just, it's just the one to take for flu. So it's a really simple, quick and easy guide for flu. Just take nat sulf if it's a gastrointestinal. Now, of course, in homeopathic uh, medicine, we have dozens of remedies that work very well for different types of flu symptoms. So, you know, if you have a flu of a different nature than this, you know, definitely look beyond cell salts for, for something that you could take. Um, Cause there's just, you know, as you know, in homeopathy, we can match so many different uh, sets of symptoms with remedies. So I've got a lot of options when it comes to flu. Um, and I was going to say, I didn't talk much about homeopathy and what it is and all that, but um, I was looking on some of the webinars and there's some really great explanations on previous webinars. So if you want to check out Robin Pollock's or N N Nicole Duelli's uh, webinar, they give great exam uh, examples and explanations of homeopathy. Um, so I wanted to say that. Okay. Um, so yeah, natrium sulfuricum, it supports the healthy functioning of liver, bile ducts, pancreas, and intestines. So what you can see, if there's an imbalance, there's, there could be diarrhea or constipation, flatulent colic. Um, and we'll see later in the snot chart, <laughs> I don't know why I call it that, but in the snot chart, um, it has very green snot. So it's kind of more advanced stages as well, of flu or even bronchitis. Um, as a support now, of course, you always want to consult with your doctor um, or your health professional with all your complaints um, before you take anything, just to make sure everything's okay. Um, but this is a really safe support that you could that you could take with it. Okay, so we're at my table of snot already, um, and so I've added some things in brackets. Um, just to give an explanation and also to add some remedies that are also indicated. So what's interesting is that when Herring did his 12 tissue remedy book, uh, and that was really the book that brought cell salt theory to the U.S., um, Schussler was still using calc sulf, so or calcarea sulfurica or calcium sulfate. So uh, 
there's a lot of information in that book about using calcium sulfate uh, as a cell soap. Now, when his final treaties, I think it's an abridged theory, I'll have a reading list at the end, it is a abridged therapy book that came out uh, 1898. It was the 25th edition, if you can believe. That's a lot of revisions. But he took out calcium salt. So um, I've kind of put it back in because it is such a useful remedy. And it is, you know, um, it's a good one. So anyways, okay, enough of that. So uh, if it's fibrinous, so it has a whitish, you're going to think of calimir. If it's albuminous, <laughs> sorry, like an egg white, so it has that kind of texture. You know, calc phos came up. Now, we know Nat Muir as well. That's like a keynote of their discharges um, is that kind of consistency. So I put that back in. Um, now, golden yellow creamy consistency of the snot or the sputum. Um, I would think of natrium phos. So it's keynote is creamy yellow discharges. But also calc sulf has that too. So I put that in there. Um, if it's more of a yellowish mucus, and this is, you know, really, um, you have to really look at what's coming out to, to, to know which cell salt to take. I don't want to do that. Um, Cali sulf would be the one to consider. So potassium sulfate. And again, calc sulf fits that as well because it has yellow discharges through and through. Um, so I put that one in there. Now green discharges, and if it's green, you need to see a doctor. Um, definitely, you don't want to have a green discharge for too long. Um, but nat sulf is a good one to take. Uh, if it's clear and transparent, they put nat mirror, which is very similar to the egg white, um, but I would imagine it's more watery, less uh, whatever that is. Okay. Um, if it's purulent, so that means there's a lot of pus, then again, nat phos fits that. And again, that would fit with the golden yellow appearance as well. Um, and if it's stinky, stinky snot, um, Califos, which I did not know, I, I did not know Califos had that. Um, I've used Califos the most in my practice, probably the most common remedy I've used in my practice, but that's, I use it because it's a real nerve nu nu nutrient. Um, so I'm kind of excited to have some, something, someone with stinky snot come in and I can try Califos with them. Um, because it's been so useful uh, for helping people overtax nervous systems and sleeplessness and after periods of stress, it's a tremendously helpful remedy. So um, to see it used in another way, it's kind of exciting. Um, and then if it's excoriating, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, kind of a book talker, so I read a lot of books, but I don't often pronounce them out loud. Um, so if it's excoriating, that means it's kind of, um, there's a lot of redness or where it is, it kind of burns and degrades the skin, um, the discharge. So it's kind of like a, not ac well, acrid maybe. Okay, and so then he says, the remedies for coughs with expectoration, coryza, catarrh of the frontal sinuses, etc., should be selected on the basis of the above distinctions. So, um, yeah, I'd never seen this table before, and I thought it was a really nice way to kind of um, succinctly say uh, what cell salt for what. It's a, great, it's a great chart to start with, right? I mean, I think once you get practice and you see it applied uh, on a person basis, then you learn more, right? But this is a good starting point. Okay, so let's talk about taking the remedies. The basics um, and of course if you have any more questions around this at the end please ask some questions I like hard questions easy questions whatever whatever gonna help you understand what I'm saying okay so how to take remedies well the the main way you let them dissolve under the tongue um, generally you want to not touch it with your hands and there's a lot of debate about whether Remedies should be touched or not. Do you use a spoon? Do you use the lid? Do you use the cap? Um, and what I what I kind of learned is that if it's a remedy that's um, like boron or even my mineral salts or things like Helios, um, it's it's okay probably to touch them. I mean. If it's not a big deal to use the lid, use the lid. But what I'm saying is that usually when uh, home, when your homeopathic practitioner gives you a remedy, um, we medicate the the pellets 
um, on the outside and they're absorbed in. So it's really important in those cases not to touch them because the remedy literally is on the outside of it. Now, how other manufacturers um, make remedies, sometimes it's from the inside out um, in the pellet. So the remedy is kind of all the way through. This is how I understood it, I could be wrong. It's all the way through the pellet. So it's gonna be less disrupted by using your hand. Um, but saying that I use the lid for everything because just you just get used to how to do that like that. Um, another way to take it, and this is great for young kids, for dogs, um, for elderly people, uh, if you have to take it more than once, if you're taking it continuously in a day, say treating a fever or some acute symptoms, dissolve it in a bit of water. So dissolve a dose in maybe half a cup of water, let it dissolve and then stir it really well, and then teaspoon or tablespoon per dose. So every time, you're about to take it, give it a good stir, and then take a teaspoon and try and let it hold it in your mouth for 15, 30 seconds before you swallow. Just we're really trying to get it absorbed in the mouth, so we don't want to swallow it too quickly. Um, and I'll go from there. Okay. So, uh, so cold and flu. So how often should you take the remedy? So for mild symptoms, um, if you're able to carry on working, um, you're feeling something, but you're still carrying on as usual every four to six hours. Now, moderate symptoms, you know, bad cough, uh, you have pain, but it's bearable. Every two to three hours is a good rule of thumb. Now, always with every homeopathic remedy you take, you want to reduce frequency on improvement. So as soon as you start to notice improvement, you're reducing the dose. If you were taking it every four to six hours, you would go down to every six to eight hours. Um, and, and go from there. Uh, if, if it's symptoms are really in, intense, so let's say you have unbearable pain, um, you know, really intense symptoms, one, you should be going to your doctor, uh, getting it checked out, but two, take it more often. You can take it, um, every 30 In the Health Canada guidelines for licensing remedies, they say uh, up to 12 times in a 24-hour period is kind of the max for that, um, which seems like a lot. But uh, and I always say with anything that you really those. I mean, if you're not, and that really is dependent how often you're taking it. But if it's clear, and if it's clearly not working, stop taking it. You got to try something else. It's it's not going to start working um, if it hasn't started working already. Um, and it's interesting with the sixth dose because, you know, I had a, I had a client that had, um, hip pain and I gave her a remedy for it and I didn't really know what it was going to do. I hoped it was going to help. And I said, okay, take two doses a day for three days. So six doses total. She didn't get, didn't experience anything until the sixth dose. She took the sixth dose and then that night she had this strong aggravation in her hip this pain will grow up and then the pain completely went away. So I don't know what it is, you know, if she'd only taken five, would it would have happened. But anyways, my point is, is that six doses, whether they're twice a day or whether you're taking them all in one day, you really want to see improvement by then. And it's probably not the right remedy if you haven't seen anything by that point. Um, and then as soon as your symptoms are completely resolved, you know, you have no symptoms and you stop taking that's very important as well. And again, I put it again, you should always consult with your health practitioner for your complaints. So don't be a hero, get support when you can, where you can, um, and, uh, and everybody will be safe, okay? So my reading list, uh, references. So the 12 tissue remedies of Dr. Schussler uh, recommended for investigation. So uh, this was written by Constantine Herring, and this is what he brought to the States. This is what he wrote, and this is what all the uh, American homeopaths I thought something was really interesting he said in this book, and, and Herring said as a, as a footnote, because he wrote it kind of in Schussler's words, and then had his own comments kind of underneath. Um, but he said it'd be a good thing to consider, like for a, for a practicing homeopath, it's a really good thing to consider 
um, when you've tried everything else. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if it's a really complex chronic case, basically. So I thought that was nice of him to say. Um, and a really great book, the book that I've kind of had for years and used as a reference, The Twelve Tissue Remedies of Schussler by Bulwark and Dewey. Um, that's kind of the classic text, I think, for homeopaths, using them in very comprehensive. Here. Yes, I do. Yeah, there it is. Um, very comprehensive. It has a repertory. Um, it has a basic materia medica. Um, yeah, I find it quite interesting. And then what I found I didn't realize existed uh, was Schussler's book. I thought he only did papers, um, but this must be his uh, translated work. It was translated by Tafel in 1898, but a bridge therapy manual for biochemical treatment of diseases. Um, and this, you get all of his information. It's actually very, very helpful. Um, and again, I have an email here. Um, so if you have any questions um, or you want a copy of the slides, just get in touch. Okay. Okay. So Robin, I'm only... 35 minutes in, but um, maybe we could open it up for questions. I think that's a fabulous idea. Thank you. It's so timely to have this kind of a talk when we're right in the middle of flu season. So we're so lucky to have this opportunity to find a song uh, in the fork of cure. <laughs> okay, a little too close to supper time. But, uh, you know, we, we have to approach all of these illnesses in different ways. It's so great to have uh, a, another way of looking at them. So we do have lots of questions. And um, I'm going to start off with one um, that will just, before we get to the more specific questions, I think this will just be a more encompassing one. And then we can get to the specific one. And that has to do with um, how do you know when to just use cell salts, when to just use homeopathy, but when should we use both? As like a self-prescriber? Either or by going to see a homeopath. It's, let's say by as a, you know, when should we, you know, in other words, I, I think you're, is your volume on? I think I hear myself talking. If you might turn that down. Uh, my volume is okay. 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 So um, whether the person can self-prescribe the homeopathy or to go and see a homeopath. So how do you know when it's like, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll just go straight to the cell salts, or should I see my homeopath, mm. or should I do both? How do you know when to do what? Well, I would, so one, if you're in active treatment with a homeopath, I would, I always appreciate it when my clients let me know um, if they're going to take, an, if they're considering taking a different remedy. So you could always, so if you're considering taking cell salts and you're seeing a homeopath, just send them a quick email or get in touch and let them know, and they can probably give you some guidance about that. Um, cell salts are really good um, uh, if you mainly have like physiological symptoms or more broad categories, let's say sluggish lymphatic system or, um, mm, let me think here, uh, uh, sluggish lymphatic system, but if there's more of a system focus as opposed to an overall picture of what the disturbance is if you know what I mean so if there's not as many maybe mental emotional things that go with it but maybe it's you know I have a tendency to have slug, sluggish lymph, lymph glands or uh, oh great one um, growing pains for children okay calcium phosphate is a great one to take for that um, but I've used cell salts it's just another tool in the toolkit so just like you have a remedy kit at home you could have a cell salt kit at home and maybe consider all of them when you're trying to decide which one's the best match, if that makes sense. Um, now, if you're taking multiple medications, um, you have a complex history, um, cell salts might be a better place to start um, just because the potency is a bit lower. And also if you're using remedies at home, better just to start with a 12 or a 30 uh, C potency, uh, stay relatively low um because you have a larger i think margin for error that way um does that answer the question i don't know and then so like as a homeopath you know if you're in practice when you use cell salts well you know if someone's on a constitutional remedy but they have physical symptoms that are bothering them 
and maybe they want to take something daily. Well, instead of giving another homeopathic remedy that's probably going to interfere with what you're trying to do deeper down, give something more peripheral. And again, you get better client retention, I think, as well, because these niggly symptoms, although we don't view them as maybe schematically the most important thing in the picture, if you help them with that symptom, they're hooked, you know? <laughs> you know, they then they can start, then you can start to explore the more chronic aspects of the case. So, um, yeah, I think that's what, and it was interesting, I, I, was, uh, I was talking to my supervisor a couple of weeks ago about cell salts, and um, he's in direct contact with George Viltoukas, and George Viltoukas in his hospital, because he, supervises a hospital team they're not allowed to give placebos like it's it's uh ethically they're not allowed to give any placebos so he gives cell salts because he knows they're not going to interfere with the the high the high potencies that he tends to use he's very brave like that that's but, good for everybody um, <laughs> to know that you can take the cell salts along with your other homeopathic medicine and in fact it will not interfere whatsoever yeah i mean that seems that's definitely been my experience and what i've heard from other homeopaths um and mentors and stuff like that. All right, let's move on. We have a lot of questions. Um, Lindy wanted to know about um, the different potencies. She called them concentration, but they're potencies. And you did say you would talk a bit about it, 6X versus 12X, for example. How do they know which okay. one to buy? Um, well, generally you can only get the 6X really in cell salts. 12Xs are a lot harder to source. Um, I would, I think there's specific, I would have to look, there's only a couple cell salts specifically that they say perhaps consider a 12X over a 6X. Um, and in terms of you know, how potencies work, so the X and the D relates to a decimal potency system, which means that at every level that it's prepared, so whether it's a 1X or a 2X, it's been diluted one in 10 before it's succussed. So, um, whereas if it's a C after the potency, that's a centesimal, so it's a one in 100 dilution at every stage of the succussion. Um, but I would generally say stick with the 6X. Um, if it's, if it's going to be helpful, it's going to be helpful in the 6X. Uh, you, you know, you're not going to miss it if you don't pick a 12X. Generally, they'll, they'll have some effect. Perfect. Um, it is flu season, and another question was asked about oxylococcinum, which uh, I think a lot of people out there will recognize as something that homeopaths recommend for the flu. And Lindy also mm -hmm. wants to know whether there are any cell salts in oxylococcinum. Are there any cell, cell salts in them? Not that I'm aware of, no. Yeah, um, are. It's just no soda, right? Yeah, it's a no soda. I actually have never tried it. I got given a free sample of it, but... Um, yeah, it's a great uh, over-the-counter homeopathic just for general flu, but no, there aren't any cell salts in that. But I mean, you could consider, if you have a gastrointestinal flu, you could consider adding nat salt to the oscillinum. <laughs> pronunciation is terrible, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's actually made from duck liver, I believe. So no cell salts there. Um, uh, Louise wants to uh, remind us of how to face out taking the cell salts around daily activities like eating, drinking, brushing teeth. So we know with homeopathic remedies, we often recommend lots yeah. of Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we like to have lots of conditions of how to take them. I mean, generally you want to take them on a clean mouth. Um, if you can wait 15 minutes before you eat or drink anything else, that's great. But um, in, in acute situations, if you need to take it, you take it. You don't, you're not going to wait you know, 20 minutes and then take it. If, if you really need to take it, just take it. And I find if you're, if it's going to help, it's going to help, um, no matter the conditions. Um, another really good thing to consider with cell salts is, um, if you're taking it repeatedly, it's less important to mine these parameters in terms of how you're taking it. Um, so if you're taking a constitutional remedy from a homeopath and giving you one or two doses, yeah, you want to be very careful about, the variables around when you take it because that's the only chance your body has to take it. Um, with cell salts, I found you can be a little bit more flexible. Um, but I, I think five minutes is a good rule of thumb for cell salts. If you can do 15, great. Um, I usually say, um, you know, 15 to 30 minutes before dinner, mm, they'll take it. Or 15 minutes, 30 minutes before a meal. 
Um, and again, anything really strong like coffee or strong mint, like toothpaste or um, really flavorful, because you're thinking you're dissolving it in the mouth. So anything that's really strong, even essential oils, um, you kind of want to stay away from while you're taking it. Great. Um, I know that you wanted to limit your talk to uh, cold and flu, considering the season, but I know uh, I, for one, give a lot of my female patients mag foss for mm -hmm. menstrual pain, and um, uh, someone wanted to know some other uses of the health besides the ones you talked about today. Okay. So yeah, mag, so we could, we could talk about magnesium phosphorica. It's a great one related to the nerves in the body. So whenever there's cramping, pain, so you think about in the stomach, menstrual cycle, um, even muscle cramps, um, if there's any kind of cramping pain, mag phos is a great one to consider. Um, and I think originally they say take it in hot water, like you dissolve the pellets in a little bit of hot water, but I don't think you have to do that. Uh, I think they just suggested that with the cramping, but also things like any kind of neuritis, anything to do with the nerves uh, or nerve pain, mag magnesium phosphorica is a great one. Um, my favorite cell salt, if you can have a favorite, is uh, Cali phosphoricum. Um, and that's, that's the one that really got me into this because I've used it so many times. I think we have these real stressful lives these days. And for whatever reason, we can go through these periods of intense stress and that has a real effect on the nervous system. And so what you see afterwards is, you know, they're not able to sleep. There's a lot of anxiety. Um, they feel really depleted, exhausted. Um, you know, you think we go through a big turmoil and maybe it's even six months to a year, maybe it's years of that. And, and what the effect on the system is going to be after that. So um, Cali Foss, hands down, is my most favorite cell salt. And just in the fact of what I've seen it do for people, um, you know, just helping them sleep again. I'm thinking of this um, elderly client that I saw years ago that just, it's just heartbreaking, you know, some of the stuff that we have to endure as humans. You know, I think we all have our time when these things happen. And she had just been through the ringer, you know, and... Um, so and couldn't sleep and was anxious so i gave her cali foss and it was just like you know i saw her a month later and it was she was like i'm sleeping and then here's like an 85 year old woman who's like vital and wants to jump out of bed and um so just to see her kind of come back to herself you know from something simple like a cell salt was really uh rewarding so yeah um other things so digestive which is really, really common for people. Natrium phosphoricum is, is kind of known as a homeopathic antacid. I didn't know that but until I started, but um, it's really, really, really popular one uh, of ours, um, especially if it comes from um, too much fat, um, if the digestive complaint comes from too much fat. And interesting with natrium phosphoricum, so all these cell salts, they have like, they, I've talked about some cell salts just in the context of cold or flu, but they can cover so many different varieties of symptoms depending on their role in the cell. So um, natrium phos as well is a great one for gout. Uh, you know, it'd be one to consider if people have frequent gout attacks, it's just a general supplement to take daily to help reduce, kind of helps break down the uric acid in the joints and stuff like that. Um, so I thought that'd be an interesting one that, you know, the stomach with the joint pain and the gout, that's a really interesting combination I've seen quite a few times. Um, should I keep going? Uh, no, so there's so many questions. So Okay, keep going. <laughs> and most people want you to just tell, me, just tell me to stop and I'll you know, just keep talking. No, we have time. We still have 11 minutes. Um, there was a question about taking more than one cell salt at a time, which reminded me that I used to do like you. I used to take uh, Calimara at the first sign of inflammation. Uh, sorry, sorry, Therumfloss, and then I would move on to Calimur. And then I read somewhere about taking them both simultaneously. And I find that if I do that at the first sign of a cold, the cold gets nipped in the butt and I haven't had a cold. Interesting. So I'm wondering what your experience is with taking more than one cell salt at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think you can definitely use more than one at a time. And I, when you have remedies are, that are really low potency, like in an X, um, they're easier to mix. There's less chance, um, less chance of them interfering. So, 
um, which is kind of, I think, how some of the combination remedies should be formulated. Um, mm -hmm. I heard through the grapevine that, um, you know, the English homeopaths at the turn of the 20th century, at the end of the 19th century, yeah, that would be the right one. Um, they, they wrote all these rules in terms of how to combine remedies and, and some of their rules were, and I'm not saying that we should combine remedies, but just to give you some indications how they rely to cell salts is that they have to be really low potency. Um, and you generally don't want more than one polycrest in that formulation. Um, and then they find, so then you just have specific small remedies and small potencies that are kind of working together to do a combined thing. So that's why sometimes I find it scary when I look on the shelf and there's, you know, combos with one M's and two hundreds <laughs> and like LM's thrown in there and put a 50 M in there. Um, I find that a little terrifying, but, um, so mixing remedies, my general, you can mix on the day, but I like to like alternate. So a, a good protocol for. Um, anemia is ferrum floss and calc floss, but taking ferrum floss in the morning and calc floss in the evening. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm definitely not opposed to taking them all at once. Like you said, taking the ferrum and the calimur together, I might actually try that. Um, I think, you know, as classical homeopaths, we're very reticent to take them at the same, exact same time, right? So I think that's why I generally think if you're going to take, start with one. And then because the water gets muddier, the more you add. Start with one. If you feel like there's another one that would fit well, then I would take them at different times and start what that about, uh, Somebody asked about the, uh, Kirsten asked about the, uh, the general dose and our experience, I'm sure with, you know, with certain companies, you know, take five and, <laughs> and or take four. What, what do you find to actually, I mean, I think that's in order to sell more product, but. That's what I think. Absolutely. <laughs> How many dose do you think you should take of these subcalls each edit for each dose? Um, I would say one or two. I mean, really, you just need. It's not even you know, as you know, it's not the quantity that really counts. It's the amount of repetition that you do it, that's important. I think so. Um, one or two pellets. I mean, because all you want to make sure is that at least one of those pellets have been medicated. You know, you don't want to just take, I would say two. I mean, I have on our cell salts, it's four pellets because that's just the standardized what Health Canada recommends. And maybe that's where Boron's getting their five pellets um, or, or, you know, the standard five pellets per dose. But really, you know, one or two uh, would, would, would suffice, you know, and you would, they would last a lot longer that way too. Mm -hmm. Ellen has a good question. She she wonders about the difference between the various brands of cell salt. Have you noticed? Yeah. I know that you sell your own, so it's a bit of a if you question. A little bit of a conflict there, but yeah. um, so what is she? What just like what the difference is, or yeah, is, did you find? Have you found some to be? You don't have to name names, but can well, I guess if you do find a difference, people are going to want to know. But are you finding any difference among the different brands in terms of the quality? I don't think so. I mean, um, most cell salts are made with lactose, you know, as they're processing. And, and also when they're preparing, you know, the insoluble remedies, lactose is often used to break down the remedy to make it um, usable to use into potency. So um, a lot of them have lactose in it. Um, and that's just, they've been doing that for years. It's kind of just an old fashioned way of compounding remedies and, and even in conventional pharmacies as well. So, um, whereas I, I mean, I have a really strong milk allergy and, um, I feel like using lactose, I mean, just environmental implications and, the, um, where was that cow? What was it being fed? Did it have a bunch of antibiotics in it? Like, you don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's going too far down the line, but I just, that's why we started the Jackson cell salts or the mineral salts is to just have a clean cell salt that has no lactose in it. And even as it's prepared, the insoluble ones are prepared according to the monograph, they're triturated with sucrose, not lactose. So they are truly lactose free, which you couldn't say, but you know, highlands are great. You know, if you don't mind taking cell salt, you know, uh, lactose, you know, they've been around forever. And you know, if, if they weren't effective, they want the market wouldn't, keep them on the market, you know, like they wouldn't, people would say something because they're so incredibly popular. So, um, 
I think it's really important though, when you're looking at cell salts, and I only recently discovered this, that um, in the States, because they have different regulations, um, some products are cell salts, but they're not prepared homeopathically. So you want to look on the label and make sure. So in Canada, it's, you know, anything homeopathic has a DIN, HM, a DIN number on it. And that's how you know that it's a homeopathic remedy, that it's made according to a monograph, that there's standards. Um, in, in the States, it's not quite the same. So you want to make sure that they list what, mo what pharmacopoeia they use when they make it, which is usually the US one, so HPUS. Um, so you want to make sure you see that on the label. Um, I think that's really important to make sure. And of course, Highlands is prepared that way. But I know in the States, there's some, um, some that aren't. I don't know how they were prepared, but um, you want to make sure you see that on the label. And then you know um, that they're prepared properly. Fantastic. Uh, Tasha did ask about why aren't more cell salts and remedies lactose free? And if you know anything about the history of homeopathy, you know that Hahnemann, who's the creator of it, used lactose uh, globules because they don't react, they're non reactive. So that's why there's a history of this uh, using the, the lactose globules. But uh, in this day and age, with all the allergies, more and more people are having different. That was, that was a big. Uh motivation for starting Jackson's Naturals. I mean, all our remedies are lactose-free. Helios doesn't use lactose um, unless you ask for that tablet form if you're ordering directly from them. But like their pellets and stuff are sucrose. So I think it's more common in Europe to be lactose-free. I don't know. Uh, it's a great question. Um, we still have time for a few more, if that's okay with you. Christy, you doing okay? Oh yeah, yeah, keep going. You can go on then. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> we're always, you know, we're always just in our office, right? Seeing clients, so it's nice just to talk <laughs> openly. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are asking uh, personal questions about illness, and I don't know that I want to go there, but uh, this is an interesting question from Pauline. She goes, it's very dry here in Calgary. What if we wake up with a cough, but we don't know yet if it's a cold or just dryness? So really the question is, do you start treating something when you don't really know what's going on and you can sell mm. So I think that would be a really great place where cell salts could come into hand because you don't always want to just be taking um, remedy, you know, homeopathic remedies in a 30 C willy nilly um, whenever something comes up. Whereas I think cell salts, it gives you a little bit more flexibility, you know, but saying that if you can't find sometimes, which is really hard when you're getting sick and with acutes, you have to wait and see how it develops. You know, it's not going to be that you're going to be too late and you can't do anything, but sometimes the illness needs a bit of time to develop in your body or in the person that you're um, working with before you can see what actually needs to be um, treated. Great. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I think that's a better way to do it if you can I mean obviously if it's really intense then you want to act but if you just wake up and you're like oh, then you, you're gonna wait you're gonna wait a little bit just to see you know is it a cold is it an allergy you know is it um is it nothing the humidifier broke. Broke. what the humidifier broke yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Um, we, it's someone noticed that you uh, have your Frank, who you've been you were treating. And Lynn has a question about her 12-pound Norwich Norwich Terrier. Um, well, she, I, I'm not gonna not gonna give you the symptoms because I, I don't think you're here to diagnose. And but what size dose and frequency do you recommend for animals? Do you have a, a rule done for that? So I would um, again, it doesn't. You know, the amount of pellets you give isn't really important. Um, but, you know, two pellets for a small dog, you could, I, you know, the easy way I do it with my dog. Wait, is he? Right. You see, you see, hi. There he is. He's on the couch. Don't judge. <laughs> He's trying to be chilled out. But um, is I usually crush two between two spoons. So it's like break broken down and then just lop it into his mouth is a really good way but follow the same dosing as you would for a human so every four to six hours if it's more moderately intense than every two hours um, and again if you're not noticing and cell salts they're great for dogs as well if you can't get much information they can't tell you what's going on unless <laughs> unless they're really good at sign language but um 
so cell cells can be good in that way. But again, if you're not seeing any improvement or any shift after the sixth dose, then it's probably not right. All right. And one last question before we let you go, uh, Christy. Beth asked a question about um, whether taking cell salts for an acute condition can antidote a constitutional. And you've already answered that, you know, cell salts have been given out by people that you know just as placebos because they're not allowed to give placebos, so they give that instead. But have you ever noticed a, a time where a cell salt might have interfered with uh, your patient's otherwise mm -hmm. treatment? Uh, or muddied the No, I honestly, I can't. Well, sorry, say it again. Or muddied the picture or, you know, gotten in the way where you said, you know what, let's stop the cell salts because maybe they're getting in the way. Um, I've done that with acute remedies, like homeopathic remedies, I think can get in the way. Um, yeah. you know, I, and again, that's why it's so important to consult with your, if you're under constitutional treatment with a classical homeopath, you really want to let them know if you get sick, if you get a cold, um, if anything changes in your health, they really need to know. Um, and, and they'll be better able to tell you whether it's going to interfere with what they're doing or not. Um, and I just say that because, you know, sometimes a cold or an acute, if you haven't had one in years and years and years, is a really important part of the treatment process. So um, you don't want to get in the way of that too much unless it becomes too intense. But again, that's why it's so important to communicate with your practitioner what's going on and then they can give you a better idea. Um, you know, I don't give cell salts with every client, definitely not. Um, but there, again, it's just a nice tool to have in the toolkit, you know, um, so you can think on your feet when you need to. <laughs> and what would cause you then to, to recommend, if you're giving somebody a remedy, a constitutional remedy, what would cause you to go, you know what, let's try to bolster you with cell salts? Yeah. I mean, if they're uh, depleted, so again, if they've come out of, so let's say they have a constitutional picture, um, and there's a clear remedy that, that fits that. Um, but they're coming out of a period of real depletion. Um, sometimes, because I don't always give constitutional daily, it might be a week, once a week, or once a month. Or, and, and honestly, some people are just used to taking things daily. <laughs> so if I gave them one packet and I said, there you go, I'll see you in a month, a lot of people are like, <laughs> what what are you talking about how does that work and and i'm not a big you know and this is probably not for this webinar but i don't i don't give placebos either so um i yeah i i just find cell salts has a nice place for there and also if i have a client and i've seen this a lot who's on multiple medications you know um Sometimes a good place to start when it's really, really messy like that is with a nice, simple cell salt and then see what changes with that and then go from there. Or sometimes you meet once and the, um, the picture's not clear, like you don't, you're not quite sure what the right remedy is. I mean, yeah, you could meet with them again, or you could, you know, clarify, but if you can't, sometimes it's nice to start with a nice low potency of something um, physical. I remember a supervisor, and I just came into my mind, a supervisor at university told me, um, and it kind of goes to what I was saying earlier, you know, if you take, if you, someone comes in and they have this one niggling symptom that's been bugging them for years, and you ignore that and go do a deeper thing and don't take care of that, they're less likely to keep coming back. Whereas if you take care of that little symptom, and that maybe that's with the cell salt to start, you know, they're going to be your biggest fan because nothing else has kind of helped. Um, so that's kind of stuck in my head, and it doesn't mean that we don't do the deep work, but you have to tailor it to what the person needs in the moment, I think, right? Yeah. Um, Thank you. So I'm very conscious of the time we're going over, and I just, I know I lied to you, but I'm going to give you two very quick little questions. Because it is, um, and I, I, I really am sorry to everybody who's asked, you know, I am this age and I have this problem. I can't give those to Christy. I can't, I can't have a direct I will say... Um, anyone is welcome to book a complimentary telephone consultation with me off my website. So if you have questions like that, that's more a confidential way to do that. I'd be happy to talk to them and you can book online for that. So anyways, yeah. I will, I will ask a little quick and dirty because we are doing colds and flu. Uh, is there one, is there a cell cell that you prefer for like a sore throat? You see a lot of sore throats this time of year. 
Hmm. Yeah, I think um, the one that I tend to use the most would be calc sulf, especially if they have a tendency to recurrent tonsillitis, recurrent throat infections. Um, calc sulf has a really strong affinity there, and also for this idea of separation. So, you know, the, it becomes inflamed, maybe there's some pus that's coming out, and it just doesn't seem to resolve. Calc sulf is really good in those instances. Um, All right, and then the last one is a question that you actually, uh, in our discussion, came up because we have a lot of uh, parents out there, um, and I know you're giving it to your son uh, because he was so. What is the protocol there? Can you give it to young children? What would be the protocol in terms of? Is there any different from adults and kids? Um, well, the, so Health Canada, their guidelines for giving remedies, and they, they used to be for children under two, and now they said under five, which I find is a bit extreme, but they want you to dilute the dose in a little bit of water first. So um, if you're working, you know, with, uh, you know, your baby or your child, one, one, you know, get help, talk to a health practitioner if you can. Um, but two, if you're giving, you know, if you want to try it, just dissolve the pellet and a little bit of water and give them a teaspoon and then see. Um, that's a really nice, gentle way to give it to young kids. Now my son, he's 15 months and he just go up. Uh, I just put the pellet right in his mouth and he has no problems with that. But um, if you're concerned about how they take it, then dissolve it in a little bit of water. Can you do like homeopathy and just put it on the lips or even on the skin or does it need to go to, into the body? Um, I'm not familiar to, of just applying it on the skin, but that's definitely an option. Okay. I don't see why not. Yeah. All right. So guess what, dear, you're done. You're done. Yay. Oh, no, no, not yay. I mean, I had so much fun, but, um, it's always oh, nerve wracking, right? So. <laughs> Gosh, if you could go to the next uh, slide. And we're just going to talk for a sec. So uh, we're getting lots of thank yous coming in, by the way, Christy. Every, people are saying I'm not a homeopath or I don't have a lot of experience. So this kind of the class is just so fantastic for me. So Perfect. thank you very much for people coming in. Thank you, Christy, here to keep coming in. And uh, as we are wont to do, we're going to just tell you about our next webinar coming up because uh, we are the engine that keeps on going. And next month, less than a month away from now, oh no, just a little bit over a month from now, uh, Dr. Stephen Malthouse, who is a naturopathic doctor, will be giving a, a different kind of webinar. Usually we have a, a topic, a disease, or a, a situation, but he's just going to talk to you about his practice and some of the remedies that he particularly enjoys and some of the remedies that he had some very good success with. He's a fabulous speaker. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge, and we look forward to seeing you all there. So. Uh, that'll be on February 20th. Put it into your calendars and then we will put it up on Facebook very soon and Instagram and then you can uh, click on it and register from there. And we'll go on to the last slide, uh, our usual. So thank you everybody uh, for coming tonight. We've, we've had the biggest attendance that we've ever had. And I'm sure it's 90% you, Christy, and maybe 10%. Of no, I don't think so. I only put it out last week, so I think it's your following. I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think it was me at all. I was not very good at marketing this. So. Ah, well, I think it's it's also uh, the fact that it's eight o'clock at night, and I think it might be a little bit of a better time. Often we've been doing it in the afternoon or even in the morning. Oh, when people are able. I think it's a good time for a lot of people. Well, for me, it's eight o'clock. For you, it's. It was only five o'clock. So, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that this was probably our highest attended class. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to everybody. If you're curious about homeopathy, please, please, please go to forhomeopathycanada.org, noodle around our webpage. You can sign up and become a member of, you can be a member of For Homeopathy Canada for absolutely no charge whatsoever. And you'll be in the loop and you'll be uh, the first to know about all of our fantastic initiatives that are coming your way. And they have a great Instagram page, so follow them. They do lots of great stuff. So oh, that's I really funny. enjoy following your page. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. So yeah. I hope everybody has a good night. Thank you for your fabulous questions. They were all wonderful. You made the evenings even fuller than it already was. And for me in Toronto, Christy in Vancouver, I bid you all a good night and a great winter and hope to see you soon. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Bye now. Fabulous job.